Welcome back out to the greenhouse everyone. You can hear my water kicking on for our compost heater. The sun is very weak today. We've got very thick clouds. It's cold outside. I've had the doors open. I've been out here kind of moving stuff in and out. I can see my breath. So I started myself a fire because the compost heater wasn't keeping up with having the doors open on such a cold day. We're sitting maybe uh, 11, 12 degrees outside right now and 50 on one end of the greenhouse and about 80 on the other end and it's slowly pushing towards the other side from this fire it's been burning for about 10 minutes now we're not out here talking about the temperatures today what we're doing is setting up a DIY junction box in the last video I was out in the garage and I shared our little junction box and we've shown that we've been able to control the flow rate or the little motor controller so with those variable speed or motor controllers we're able to get a lot better longevity and better function for all of our systems here, especially running off solar power. So today we're going to put together and I'm going to show some of our little DIY junction boxes that we've been creating. And this is very cheap and it's a pretty simple DIY that almost anybody could achieve. And why we're building these little junction boxes out is because we have a high humidity environment. I mean, we can get raindrops or water drops condensation from the top of the greenhouse because we have so many open water sources. We've always got pretty decently high humidity levels throughout the winter time as we've got all of the greenhouse sealed up. So in order to avoid any catastrophic failure from a single drop of water hitting a motherboard or a small little circuit board like this, that could create a bad situation and we don't want any issues. So we decided to build ourselves some controllers and start placing them. You can see one hooked up on the wall behind me. We've got 10, five and two amp controllers. So we're pretty well able to control anything inside our greenhouse. And so if all of that sounds interesting and you're not bored yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate it. And let me know what you think of the new microphones. I am still getting used to using this. It's only the second video here. So we did our first test video. If you haven't seen that, let me know what you think think of it on this video let's get into this so bringing you guys right up front and center you can see I've got myself a dual action box here we've got ourselves a simple one controller system and as you can see I've been experimenting with the wire designs and this one I left a large hole and my thought on having a larger hole is that moisture can escape. And I'll also be trying these smaller, more wire sized holes there. So we will see how well these perform through the long haul here. So first things first, we've got our little junction boxes, nice little plastic container. They snap together. They've got two little spots where you can pull it apart. It's fairly simple to get apart. It can be kind of tricky though. Some of them are kind of sticky. So anyway, we've got the little junction box and that is how we are creating these simple systems here to protect all of these. So each of these junction boxes are about a dollar, a little over a dollar. You can get five to 10 different size ones for about $10. So you can get the small ones like these or larger ones, give or take on how much you want to spend. So I've also been experimenting with putting little windows on them. So I had super glued a small piece of plastic, just clear plastic and we've got a small window we will check this one out because we have indicator lights on our two amp controllers all those greenhouse lights just kicked on those are super cool to see so the next part of this puzzle here is the controller so we've got some five amp controllers it's hard to see through that mylar packing but we've got a few five amp controllers we've got ourselves a couple more two amps and i've got another 10 amp controller in this bag here and we're going to go ahead and i'm going to build out one of these little junction boxes and show how i'm doing it and then we'll go ahead and set a system up and operate a pump or operate a fan so first things first we've got a few little drill bits very simple all you do is just match up your wire gauge size a little bit bigger than the wire and you've got to be able to let's pull one of these two amp controllers out and show it here so this is the controller fresh out of the package and then here's a controller that we had already put together there so you can see that it bolts on and then you pop your little switch and cover it's all sealed up so what we can do is take that off 
and then and then we're able to unwind this nut here and we can cinch it against the box so that's how we're making a bulkhead style seal to pin this in drill a little relief out there go up to the next size go right up to the next size minus a little debris we've got ourselves a nice hole through the box there we can go ahead and we'll slide our controller right in so now we're in the box not sealed up it still has to be screwed in we'll go ahead and drop a washer on there that comes with the kit and then we we'll just drop the nut on there and tighten it down so now this is secured to the box it might move a little bit but i can spin the controller you can see it move a little bit so we'll tighten this down with a hand tool and then this will be ready to go so we got her nice and tight it's sitting up in there all we got to do is put our little button back onto it now we're ready to rock and roll and drill some wire holes and run the wires out So we're gonna go ahead, run our wires through the junction box onto the controller, hook it up, and then we will run something with it. So one of my son's toys came with this tiny little screwdriver and that little screwdriver works absolutely perfect to loosen up all of these little tiny screws. It's almost like it was made for this. So now that we opened up our connections on here, we'll be able to run our wires right in and hook this thing up. Go ahead, run in our power negative wire from our power source, or in this case, our batteries. So now we're gonna go ahead and hook up our power positive to the battery from battery to controller. And then we've got our power out. So we're gonna use yellow for power out. And that is going to be to whatever we're going to be operating, whatever system or motor pump. And then last, we've got negative out to whatever we're controlling here. Try and get it through there. So there we have built ourselves out a junction box, DIY junction box, and this thing's ready to rock. I'm going to throw that little homemade windowed lid on this one because this is a two amp controller. So now that thing's fully sealed. It's ready to rock and roll. All we got to do is open the top and we'll tap through. Just like in this controller, you can see I just got two holes so I can mount to the walls and stuff. So first things first here, we've got a simple little fan. I used this in the last video to demonstrate this. We're gonna run a water pump also. I just wanna hook it up to this and show its simple operation because this is a two amp controller. And I'd like to use our five and 10 amp controllers for larger systems. So we're building them out accordingly to the power that they need to accommodate. So let's get our battery built here. So I've got two batteries and I just zip tied them together. So they're decently solid here. Now I just took some of our wire and some connectors and made basically positive positive plug and a negative negative plug. So with these two little DIY clips, we're going to run these batteries in a series. So we're going to be hooking them together, making one large 12 volt battery just for a little more power because I just charged these up because they're just like test batteries for us right now because we don't really have anything to use them for just yet in the greenhouse. So as I get all of this connected together, that is two batteries ran in series, two 12 volts, one 12 volt battery, one large 12 volt battery is basically what we created right here. So I got a couple dual alligator clips so I can hook up my negative on the battery to the negative on the controller. And then we're going to hook up our positive here. I'm just bringing you guys a little closer to the work area here. 
get all this extra junction box stuff out of the way here. So we've got our positive and negative to the battery hooked up. We can hook up our positive and our negative to our system that we're going to operate here. So everything is hooked up and none of the wires are crossed. So let's go ahead and try and kick it on. All right, so saw a little flicker. One of our connections is a little funky. So this dims down and gets brighter the more power you use. So you can see it blowing debris on the floor up there. So that is one way to use this little junction box for some type of controller. I just like to have that little window because that's a pretty good indicator, indicator light, obviously. So let's hook this up to a water pump. So I've got this one 10 amp controller in there and I've got two 10 amp controllers in this box here just for quick look there. So these are what's actually going to be on this wall and I did a lot of testing and experimenting and getting all these boxes situated so just learning and sharing what we've been doing here so we can take this little box that's plugged into the wall and control the flow rate on the pump now I've got myself a new pump I mean we've had this for a while we just haven't used it for anything yet so I just hooked myself up a nice little upside down J pipe and I got these zip ties here to hold it so I should be able to just set it right on to our other line and that worked so let's go through the painstaking process of hooking up these wires and stuff I'm gonna spare you the pain and I'll go ahead and hook them up and then we can watch the flow rate be controlled so I believe I have this hooked up there's our pump system battery all tied into that junction box just temporarily hooked up. So what we're going to do is not get shocked a bit. Click that on. Oh, shoot. Instantaneous power. All right. So. We can flow slowly or we can flow a lot. So this actually works quite well, as you can see, for water pumps. Why all of this is so crucial is because our compost heating water, we spent tons of time just trying to get the flow rate correct. So with the right pump, the right little controller, a timer, and everything we got, we can throw it all together, get it permanently hooked up, and that should really help us with all of our systems here that should help us with more longevity, better heat draw, better heat transfer from the pile to our compost, to the tank. We can really ramp up the temperatures we're drawing by lessening the flow, just like we showed with our sand heater there. So I'm gonna be hooking up these junction boxes and we're going to be hooking up our windmill will have to start a fire on the ground outside to anchor our pole. Don't forget to let me know what you think of the new microphone here. It seems to work well. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching these videos and until next time.